What's up everybody welcome back to another genshin impact build video today we're going to be covering hu tao now hu tao is a character that i ended up not getting the first time around because she came with a split decision with her weapon the staff of homa ended up copping the staff of homa the first time because i had zong li when the hp buff was out and that was just incredible but now that she's back i got super lucky on the gotcha i'm gonna go ahead and post that video link in the description as well as a card so you guys can check that out if you'd like but i ended up getting very lucky with her ended up getting c1 hu tao and I really want to talk about exactly how I've been using her, but she's Im improved my time to kill in a lot of areas of the game, making the grind a lot easier, making the abyss a lot easier and more manageable and more consistent, more importantly. Attributes. Her substat is crit damage, which I cannot stress how important this is for main DPS units. It makes it so much easier to build them. As we all know, you can only get crit rate or crit damage from the circlet. I currently have her with a crit rate on here, but if you get really lucky with substats, you could even put crit damage on here. Looking into the weapons, we have the Staff of Homa, which is her signature weapon. This is an incredible weapon, increases HP by 20%, as well as increasing the attack bonus based on a ratio of the max wielder's HP. And then on top of that, when the HP is less than 50%, that attack bonus is increased by an additional 1% by the max. The goal with this character, just based on what we know of her weapon, is to keep her under 50% HP already. And she has enough HP to basically sustain that. And so being under 50% for her right now for my character, I think she's at 37k. That's still 18,000. That's insane. Really, really, really great weapon. Great benefits of stats. Now let's go ahead here and talk about the artifacts really quick. You're going to want to build her on either Crimson Witch or the other one, which I have a difficult time saying, so I'm just going to pull it up. Shemanawa's Reminiscence. These are the two options. Obviously, Crimson Witch, we know exactly what that does, but the Shemanawa's does when a casting an elemental skill, The if the character has 15 or more energy, which most likely she will, they're going to lose that 15 energy, but increase their charge attack by 50%. I specify charge attack because that's how she's built around it. That's the main damage component that she utilizes. This effect will not trigger again during that duration. So this is extremely nice because it lasts for 10 seconds, which her elemental skill only lasts for nine seconds. So once you proc it, it will last the duration of the entire skill. So this is perfect for her. Now, if you have Crimson Witch already built, you want to use that on her. It also works fantastically well. Yeah, fantastically is a word. Now, going into Constellation, I have her at C1. A lot of people have her at C0, and that is fine. The difference between C0 and C1 is how you animation cancel her charge attack. For her charge attack, you can either jump out of it or you can sprint animation cancel out of it. Now, with C1, sprint animation canceling will consume stamina, and it'll be manageable because the charge attack itself will not. In C0, that's not the case. Her charge attack will consume stamina, meaning that jumping is really the only viable way to continue doing it for nine seconds, and you will still probably run out of stamina by that point. The other uh, constellations we have here is increasing damage of her Blood Blossom damage, which to me doesn't really seem like a huge benefit. This is just very minor because the Blood Blossom damage really isn't a whole lot. It's only like 100% of her um, attack damage. And then obviously her skill increases are nice. And then upon defeating an enemy affected by Blood Blossom itself, all allies in the party will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 15 seconds. Now this is actually pretty big because one of her talents doesn't really do a lot for her in terms of boosting crit rate of the team. And I'll explain why in a moment, but this is really, really big because you're most likely going to be killing people with her and then swapping to another character that also does sub DPS. And this is going to be incredible for them. So C4 is also really, really good, but definitely not necessary. And then obviously C6, we have triggers when HP is below 25%. Utah will not fall as a result of damage sustained. And additionally, for the next 10 seconds, all of her elemental and physical resistance is increased by 2%. 
and then her crit rate is increased by 100% and her resistance to interruption is greatly increased. This effect triggers automatically when Hu Tao has 1 HP left. It can only occur once every 60 seconds. This is pretty big if you just want to build her at basically all crit damage. You will not need crit rate basically at all with her because you can build her around a shield team. The only thing is, is it's extremely dangerous because if your shields do not sustain, if you do not rotate fast enough, it will kill her. It can be riskier gameplay, but it could also be very rewarding because you can get way higher crit damage numbers that are extremely consistent. Now, moving into the talents, obviously the first thing you want to look at is which ones you're going to prioritize. At least that's the first thing I care about. As a pyro unit, as we know, Melt and Vaporize are extremely overpowered. And so Spirit Soother can be really good if you want to get that burst DPS and it can still put out some incredible numbers. If you're wanting to do her charge attacks, doing her normal attack first, elemental skill second, and pretty much kind of paired together equally, and then having her burst second. So I think I hit level eight with these two first and then did this one third. Let's go actually through and take a look at what her talents do. The first one, her normal attack, primarily it's gonna be for her charge attack being at 214%. Second one is guide to afterlife, which I'm trying to make sure I sum this down a little bit. Basically, you're going to consume some HP, about 30% of her HP that she currently has, and you're going to get a percentage of her max HP as an attack boost. Now, that attack boost cannot exceed 400% of her base attack, but it's a pretty substantial amount of increase, and it's going to convert all of her damage into pyro damage, which you're not going to be able to infuse it with anything like Chung Yoon's little circle bubble thing. Not going to be able to change it, which is really, really nice. And then it's going to allow her charge attacks to affect enemies with a debuff called Blood Blossom, which is going to cause damage of pyro damage DPS every four seconds. And I think it has a duration of eight seconds in total. Now this cooldown is only 16 seconds. So there's only a seven second gap between how long she can go into the state before she can use it again, which is not a lot of time. It's just enough to do a rotation and come right back to it. And then you have Spirit Soother. You're going to do a large AOE, regenerate HP based on how many enemies you hit up to five enemies. Now, if her HP is below or equal to 50%, you're going to deal even more damage. So you're going to see in the skill attributes that you're going to have them split based on her above 50% mark and under 50% mark. Now, obviously the goal with her based on her weapon, based on her talents is to keep her under the 50% threshold so she does more DPS. Now going into Flutterby, uh, this is her first passive talent, which to me is kind of a waste because if you use her skill activation, it is going to increase the crit rate of your team for eight seconds, but her skill lasts nine seconds. So this is only if you leave it early. Sanguine Rouge, when she's under 50% or her pyro damage bonus is increased by 33%. And then her final one is just a cookie. Now, before we talk about the team comps, I did want to bring up a resource that is available to everyone that I didn't realize existed recently, but I've always wanted. I've always been like, I wish that we could see what other people are using in the game and see what percentages of the community are utilizing what comps so that we can test around other things when we maybe don't have all the time in the world to theory craft how characters can be used together or the differences between what players have in terms of character lineup. So. This is an incredible resource that is based on data that is input by the player based on what they're using and collects it and puts it into an algorithm to show you what the highest percentage of users are using in the abyss to clear content faster. Now, how you can utilize that for the rest of the game is that you can see what characters that you want to use, and then you can actually disable the characters you don't have. So like if I don't have Zhong Li, I can unclick, unselect Zhong Li and then filter the character out. And this is gonna give me the highest a percentage of team comps that are available without Zongli in it, which will obviously change the result, but it gives you some options to play around with. This answers the question that a lot of people have when they come to my channel, which is what characters should I pair these up with to try a good team comp? You go here, put this information in and try it out in the normal world, messing around and see if you like the rotation and you can figure it out. Best way to do it. First things first, this is the main team that you will see at the highest level of Abyss for most used, and it's incredible. So Hu Tao basically self-sustains with her healing. You've got uh, Sing Chu who is going to be doing some sub DPS, which is insane, especially over the course with Hu Tao having her Blood Blossom damage and Sing Chu's uh, hydro damage over time. Vaporize is consistent. And then you have Albedo and Zhang Li, which you get the resonance buff, which is beautiful. So you're going to increase shield strength. You're also going to be getting damage dealt increasing by 15%, which happens after everything. So the calculation is bigger. 
and then dealing damage will decrease the geo resonance by 20 percent for 15 uh, seconds this is big because you're going to be using them for their personal rotations as well i didn't even realize this existed and when i tried it i was like this is insane so very quick clear times and can clear pretty much everything in the game. I did this comp in just a bunch of the different world bosses and they all function and work. But anyways, the other ones for maybe more free to play friendly characters. So Sing Cho has been in the banners multiple times, Bennett, Sucrose, they've all been in the banners multiple times at this point in the game. The overall purpose here is to be rocking Vaporize over time. So even having someone like Kaya would probably make more sense here and that would proc melt instead. Obviously, Sucrose is gonna be increasing elemental mastery, Bennett's gonna be doing an attack buff, uh, Sing Chu is gonna be doing not only sub DPS, but it's also going to add damage mitigation for Hu Tao to protect her, and then Hu Tao's obviously gonna be slain shit. And then we've got this team right here. If you got lucky and got Kazuha, Kazuha can kind of bring everybody in. Um, Bennett and Sing Chu will then use their abilities, which will hopefully, you know, keep them in Bennett's circle. And then you can just charge attack through them with some Vaporize. And then this is a unique team that I found that I think would be a lot of fun. I haven't messed around too much with it, but I can see the benefit here is that you would use Bennett and Sing Chu um, when they have their cooldowns completed so that you have your damage over time, you have your attack buff and your healing, and then you can use Hu Tao to you know, obviously do some damage. And then outside of Hu Tao, you can switch to then Raiden, which uh, will then end up doing a lot of damage. We'll be able to use her burst and stay on the field during the rest of these uh, cooldowns and also give them some energy back for their bursts upon rotation. All right, I know that that was a lot of information on Hu Tao, but I do hope that you felt like it was helpful in understanding her kit and how to build her and just her overall kit design. So I just want to thank you so much for getting to this far in the video. Like the video if you feel like this was helpful. Comment below any thoughts, uh, concerns, or questions you may have. And consider subscribing to the channel if you like content on Genshin Impact. I'll continue making videos like this if, if they seem to be helping the community. And based on my Chi Chi video, it seemed like that was something that people really liked. It was my take on some of these characters. It's been a while since I've done one. So I figured that with a character like Yu Tao that I finally gotten the ability to understand a little bit more deeply, I would make this video. But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much and you have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.